Okay, so what I'm working on today is, I don't really know what it is, <laughs> ultimately, because that's how things are for me as an artist. I don't really know what I'm doing until it's being done. What I do know is that sometimes things really stand out to me, and I don't know why, and they sort of stick in my psyche and is sort of in this giant melange of things, and... I somehow put them together. So this piece, whatever it shall be, began actually about a year ago, I think. When I was reading through a magazine, I was doing a bunch of collage work at the time, and I found these images and they were so vivid, I suppose is the best word. They really stood out to me. And so these are the images. You can see it's all about capitalism. It was in I don't even remember what magazine. It was something like Adbusters or something that was very, you know, sort of anti-capitalist and avant-garde and all of that. And so I loved the colors, first of all, the sort of uh, t kind of the almost kind of Tiffany blue, but that they used the Coke bottles. They stood out to me so profoundly. This is actually from a different magazine, but I sort of started collecting these images of Coke bottles. And there was something about the bottling process, something about that very mechanical industrial process and I think bottling in and of itself right sort of this this filling of things and sealing and packaging of things that was very intriguing to me and so I saved the images <laughs> needless to say they were in a stack I have stacks of magazines that uh, pictures from magazines that somehow inspire me or draw me to either poem or art or collage work so I had this in my ether <laughs> from about a year or so ago. Then I was doing a glass project for m an installation piece I'm doing at CSUN and so my brother, it was his son's birthday party and they happened to have some coke bottles and they're these little eight ounce coke bottles, the little ones. Uh, they're kind of hard to find. They're from the old coke machines. We got them at Vallarta because they were cheap and they had them. So Anyway, they're the old-fashioned Coke bottles, and they had them at the party. It was a sort of circusy, vintage, really cute little party. And so they had cases of these. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm doing this glass project. Could I possibly use the bottles? Well, they said, of course, sure, we'll save them for you. I'll drop them off at the house. I was like, great. So I have all these Coke bottles. Well, <clears throat> turns out the way that the labels are, they don't... They're not the stickers, right? They're actually printed directly onto the bottle, which makes glass fusion difficult because you can't have anything else on the bottle glass because it doesn't, you know, really happen well in the kiln. So I was going to have to grind them all off. So I was a little <laughs> disappointed about that because I really love the color. It's, it's that kind of really cool blue-green color. So... Anyway, but I have all these bottles, and so I was going through this week, and actually I got fixated with turnstiles, which is another thing that I had gotten fixated about the, around the same time, and so I went to Home Depot, and I was playing with the idea of a turnstile, and how can I make a turnstile, and it would be copper, and sort of have people pass through it and feel the metal and hear the sound, when I realized it might be fun to actually work with Coke bottles. I sort of triggered that memory, and I remembered, oh... Remember how this stuff was so pretty and maybe there's something there, there's something about the bottling process that I could use. And so, anyway, so I got home today and as you can see, <laughs> I have my series of Coke bottles here. I have three little six packs of them and an extra. So I think I have 19, but I'll probably break one so it'll be more like 18. And... I'm just going to kind of see what happens. So the the first thing I was sort of thinking of was almost doing like a mousetrap type thing where you build sort of a mechanism that would move the bottles through the machine, but also using other size bottles. So, for example, like this wine bottle, obviously, if the system was built to work with those little Coke bottles, like you can see, they're not quite the same size nor the shape nor anything, and so I feel like in that, sort of implicitly, there's a critique sort of of systems that are built for one size person or color person or shape person, you 
have to do something, you know, and I was thinking about like quality control and that idea of that very mechanical process having to sort of standardize and homogenize people. So I think that might be interesting. And then there was, you know, this other thought that I had sort of as I was playing with this. I, I went and I was playing with copper pipes and everything, and I was like, well, how else? It might be difficult to sort of build that. Not that that's ever stopped me, <laughs> but it might be sort of difficult to build that. And so I decided, what if I almost did like croquet <laughs> type thing, like like you build this sort of obstacle course via, you know, almost like a arches getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you have this very small uh, very small sort of target or goal that you're trying to get things through but there's are sort of all these different obstacles in the sense of uh, maybe certain people are given like fruits say you know you were trying to use a broom to get a mango through this obstacle course much more difficult than say if you had a golf ball that was on a track designed to just sail right through, right? And so obviously the golf and the white ball and all of that is sort of a nod to the fact that, right, like white, who, you know, who plays, who plays golf? Large majority of, you know, men, right? It's more men than women that play golf. Um, it's businessmen who play golf and they're the ones who are sort of batting around these giant balls having to deal with all of our lives. And so... You know, they, they seem to sort of have this fast track through all of these obstacles that say if you aren't that ideal, that perfect round white ball, and you don't have this precision sort of instrument to get you through, it's much more difficult. So I was thinking of a beach ball, I was thinking of a watermelon, I was thinking of a mango or a pineapple or I don't know why I was fixated on fruits, I mean you could really do anything maybe a soccer ball, but I didn't want to knock anything over. So anyway, and I was thinking about what I could make these sort of arches out of and actually thinking of tailoring it specifically to the people in my class and, you know, what what might each person be represented by or maybe have them each bring something to be represented by. And then maybe somebody doesn't get a stick at all, right? <laughs> um, and obviously it's commenting on layers of access and the ability to get into these places or have access to certain areas and really that's sort of what the turnstile is all about also it's about the sort of systemized access that's given and not given and I feel like there's two things that are interesting about turnstiles first of all you can only go through them one way and second of all that they're designed to go one person at a time right so there's both this isolation that happens and this very unidirectional type of channeling. And so I feel like that's an interesting process as well. So those are sort of the three things that I'm sort of juggling around with these projects, sort of giving you a history of maybe where some of my inspiration comes from, but also, you know, how I get fixated on the objects and so from those objects and my personal experience, how I might build this, these performances together. So, anyway, that's all I have to share for tonight, so thanks for tuning in.